Today I wanted to talk to you guys about color contrast and tonal contrast. Now, color contrast falls into color theory. I'm not getting into color theory yet. This is not an in-depth uh, theoretical tutorial. I just want to touch on something that I don't believe a lot of people think and talk about very often. I did two talks last year. I did a black and white talk and I also did later in the year, uh, I did a, a flash talk. And I thought it was very important to talk about contrast, whether it be color contrast or tonal contrast. Now, all of us are very familiar in our Lightroom products or our you know, other editing products. I use Lightroom, our software, editing software, which with uh, HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance. And we've learned in black and white how to use that. We've learned in color how to use that. Now, I think there's a lot of misunderstandings um, regarding color contrast in particular and how that interprets itself into tonal contrast. I think uh, we are easily deceived by what's around us uh, and being able to distinguish between a tonal and a color contrast I think is very important. Now obviously I come from a film background. I mean there was a stage sort of in my early 20s where I only shot black and white film. I never touched color film for years. So indirectly I would see the world just through tonal contrast. I'd just be looking for my light situations void of color and uh, obviously I saw color but I wasn't looking you know if you saw a lady in a red dress against a gray wall that w that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to interpret well in a black and white photograph you're not looking for that you're looking for tonal contrast so let me give you an example of what I mean so what we have is the color wheel now the color wheel that I've drawn here because I didn't have the heart to steal from someone online so please excuse how rudimentary it looks um, I'm proof that you can't draw a perfect circle uh, yeah, so what you have on it is your primary colors, which is yellow, red, and blue, and then your uh, complementary colors, uh, which fit in between. Now, if you were to look at the chart itself, if you're looking for the highest level of contrast between two colors, I'm not talking tonal contrast, I'm talking colored contrast, you would look exactly opposite on the wheel. So you're looking at uh, purple as in being opposite to yellow, you would have green being opposite to red, and you would have orange being opposite to blue. So the complementary of the blue in the opposite side is the orange. Where the confusion comes in between color contrast and tonal contrast is the confusion over saturation and brightness or luminance. That's another word we use. So you'll see luminance on your on your sliders, on your editing programs, you'll see saturation and luminance. Hue we're not discussing today but those two is what we're talking about. They're not the same thing. Luminance refers to the brightness of the color. Saturation refers to the richness, the um, the saturation of the color. I don't know what other word you meant to use, but you get what I'm trying to say. So uh, I think if you see a bright yellow color, people presume brightness, but that's not necessarily the case. It may be an oversaturated yellow, and it's getting your attention and it's presenting itself as a tonal value, like a, um, a brightness, but that may not be the case. Okay, so now I'm in Lightroom, uh, the Lightroom app on my iPad. And I've brought up the color wheel, which I've just shown you. And I'm about to remove all saturation from this color wheel, remove the color. And we're obviously going to be left with a tonal value, a luminance value. And I'll be interested to know what you guys interpret as the outcome uh, when I do a, a conversion to black and white. Uh, do you guys think there'll still be separation between the wedges that you see on the color wheel from a brightness perspective? Uh, it's interesting. Let me change it to black and white and let's see what you think. All right, and as you can see, there's very little. So the, the tonal contrast on this color wheel is almost zero. There's slight differences on the wedges. The color contrast is huge. 
particularly amongst those exactly sitting opposite on the color wheel. All right, we have a good example here of color contrast. We have purple and yellow, two opposite sides of the color wheel, put together in two squares. And yeah, I'd love to know if once I convert this into black and white, what you think would be the tonal value of these two colors. Which of these two colors is brighter? Now, I would imagine most of you, if you're honest, um, not thinking of it as a trick question, would think that the yellow is a brighter color, uh, has a higher luminance value. Well, let's convert it and have a look. And as you can see, they're identical. So there's no way by looking at those two colors that you would uh, be able to determine brightness. So if I was to go into the luminance sliders and do a pick, let's go to the yellow, let's darken the yellow as much as we can and let's lighten the purple as much as we can. So now we've created tonal contrast on the extreme end. Okay, I just did this with a red and yellow, obviously not opposite sides of the color wheel, but certainly has a fair amount of color contrast. I'd love to know what you think here. So let's convert this into black and white. Well, yep, yeah, this does have a difference. The yellow is certainly lighter than the red. All right, so let's go look at some images. Now, what I'm gonna try to show you here is maybe a way in determining when you get into post-production, whether an image is gonna be a black and white image or a color image, or even while you're shooting. You know, often I know when I'm shooting what the image is gonna finally look like, because I've been doing it for a long time. So, and, and certainly ways in which you can create color contrast in post-production and you can also create tonal contrast in post-production all right so let's have a look at the uh, this Cuba image that I've taken there's a gentleman standing in a town called Trinidad in Cuba now straight away when I met him and I did a whole series I did like about 10 photographs with him wide ones you know tighter images close-ups but this image is all about his orange shirt and that blue wall that he was standing by so straight away when I asked him if I could photograph him I was drawn to him because of the strong color contrast between the orange and the blue, which are opposite sides of the wheel. So in this situation, I knew from the get go, this is a color image it was never a black and white image. Um, so yeah, well, let's convert it to black and white. And let's just have a look. Okay. So yeah, as you can see, very flat skin tone, shirt tone is, is almost identical gray to what you find on the wall. There's elements of this cracks in the wall. There's some white lines on his shirts brings a bit of contrast, but certainly not enough to give the image pop. Again, you could use your luminance slider and you can create that pop. If you go to the picker, you don't have to choose a color. You can actually just you know, lighten it up. There's so many things you can do, but certainly nothing's going to have the same effect as the original color contrast that was created. Let's go to a wedding image here. Okay, this is an interesting one. This is one where I, to some degree, created color contrast and to a larger degree, create a tonal contrast. So this image didn't have the orange um, color temperature or the, the warmer color temperature that you see here from the original. I warmed it up a fair amount in post-production using the temperature, color temperature slider. So by doing that, I was then able to use the saturation slider of blue and sort of really you know, bring out the blue in the sky, um, make, it make it sort of more saturated and by doing that and underexposing the image by a stop or two, I was able to create that color contrast between the mountains and the foreground and the sun going down and the sky. Now, quite a difficult shot in the sense that I'm shooting straight into the sun. It's not a sun, it's not yet sunset, it's close to, but I'm dealing with a full sun straight into my face. So by underexposing it, I had to light them up with full power flash. So the flash is right of, cent right of screen, 45 degrees, and that's hitting them you know matching the exposure to some degree of the background so i've created in post both color contrast and by lighting them up i've created tonal contrast in them so they've got jaw lines now shadows on the jacket the dress pops the hair's got nice contrast in it uh, it's got a bit of backlighting on them from the sun so you're getting a sort of a, a rim effect on them as well so there's some beautiful tonal values and color values in this photograph uh, some created by me and some naturally there just having to harness them by doing things like underexposing the image and so on. So these are the type of things you should think about when, when photographing. So obviously if I converted this to a black and white, it should work. You know, I can see there's a lot of tonal values. The, funny enough, the background, the mountainside has very little to, uh, colored contrast. It looks pretty flat. They pop because they've been lit by me. So I've created the tonal value on them. 
but you can see how it's lacking. You know, you can see that this is all about being a color photograph uh, from the start. It takes time because obviously an image like that, I've, you know, standing there, I knew what my final product would look like when I was photographing it. So that, that type of stuff takes time to learn. Uh, you know, it's sort of muscle memory after a while. Here's another image. Okay, so this image again, um, I, you know, to some degree, I'll, I mean, I'll control the color contrast, but the color contrast was there already. You know, we have the sun going down on the left of frame. It's reflecting on the mountains, creating an orange look. The sea's blue, his jacket's blue, their skin's even got an orange tone to it. So there's a lot of strong color contrast, and you know, this is what draws you into this image, these beautiful blues and oranges. But then obviously, because I've underexposed the background to some degree to, to, you know, to keep it looking rich and controlled, you know, no highlights here, I really lost, a, and there's nowhere in the image where I've lost a highlight. I've controlled it nicely, and I've lit them with the flash to balance them out. And by lighting them up with the flash, I've created that tonal contrast. So to combined together, it's a strong, strong image. However, I don't believe this converts very well, if I remember correctly. As you can see, their orange skin actually is a middle gray. And it's the same middle gray you found in the mountains. It's the same middle gray you found in the sand. And it's just a muddy, flat, black and white image. You know, if this had to be, for some reason, a black and white image, I have no choice. I'd obviously take the luminance slider and I'd lighten their skin up to make them pop but there's no doubt in my mind this is all about combining both tonal and color contrast together and you know bringing this picture out you know pushing it to its max and providing the most impact again you could richen your you know in post-production you can certainly saturate your blues warm up the image underexpose for the flash all these elements enhance that color contrast and by using the flash you're bringing in the tonal contrast all right so let's go a little bit further here i'm sorry if you can hear there's a cricket in the background you know i live in africa so there's crickets all the time and there's one really loud one outside and i'm, I'm sure the microphone's picking it up so it's not a problem with my sound please excuse it it's actually a cricket outside there's nothing i can do about it uh, even if i went and stood there next to the cricket would stop and then come back inside it would start again those of you who, who live near crickets know this Anyway, I've sidetracked it. Let's keep going. I've got, let's have a look at any other images I can show you. Obviously, this image here is all about the color contrast, those blues against the oranges. Okay, let's look at the shot here of, of, of um, Robert down at the harbor. Now, some of you know this image already. Those of you who saw my GFX 50R review, uh, those of you who haven't, you're welcome to view it. It's on my channel. I'll actually put up a link at the end of the video. But yeah, this, is, this image is really strong in color contrast. You have red in the boats, you have green in the boats. Those two colors are opposite sides of the wheel. You have a yellow boat and a blue boat on the left. You have blue water against orange skin. He actually had a lot more red in the skin in the original one, which I took out, but there's definitely orange there. The sky's blue, so you've got a lot of beautiful colors here that create lovely contrast. But obviously by lighting him up left of frame with a flash, I was able to create those nice highlights in the hair. The smoke is shot. You can see the smoke marks. You can see, you know, the white cigarette, you can see the knuckles, you can see everything, you know. So it's, it's got both, both values, strong values to it, both tonal and, and color contrast. But because it has such a strong color value, uh, contrast value, I kept it in color. But certainly if a client said to me, listen, I love this photo, can you make it black and white? And you know, I'd love to buy a print. There's no reason why I wouldn't. I just don't think it has the same impact. So this one, I'll just raise the exposure a bit. Just increase the contrast a bit and that makes it a black you know reasonably good black and white image i suppose i could actually you know go to the blue on the luminance slide and i could probably darken the sky a little bit like that but yeah you get the idea all right let's move up here okay let's go to the image that actually is the thumbnail of this video now, this is the groom that arrived for a shoot and he was driving a six, uh, late 50s Corvette, which is one of my favorite cars. And I was so happy to see it because it, you know, it really pushed me um, sort of artistically. You know, I needed to combine this car. It's such a beautiful car. So what I had was, was one of the groomsmen had a pickup there. And I asked him if I could ride on the back of it. So he drove it parallel to this car. We weren't going that fast. I held the roll bar and I photographed him, keeping him in the same part of the frame the whole way through at like 20th of a second to create that motion blur. 
and then my assistant lit him up with a flash sort of next to me on this on the back of the pickup to pick up all the highlights of the chrome and things like that which you can see so straight off the bat again i knew this is the color image there's no way this is a black one image the red off the gray tar just you know has so much color contrast um but let's have a look because there is elements of uh, tonal contrast in this image let's convert it and have a look yeah and it's pretty flat you see there's no ways you can interpret that red you know that red's gray value is almost identical to the tar road and the building behind it's really flat so in this situation you know obviously you could take the color picker and you could go into the red and you can darken it you can make it into a, a black corvette looking corvette with a you know and you can lighten him up make his jacket bluer sorry lighten him up go the opposite way or you can darken up his jacket and go to the red and you can lighten up the car to almost like a really light looking Corvette. Um, so let me see, it could probably go even lighter than that. Let's have a look. Yeah, there you go. So there's different ways you could go about making this a black and white image, but I still believe this one is all about color. All right, let's have a look further. Um, all right, so this is the image I took of Sir Richard Branson. It was a couple of years ago, I was on one of the trips where I normally um, get asked to photograph him. Now, on these trips, I'm obviously just taking one off camera flash. I'm shooting a lot of different things, not just portraits. But he had asked me personally just to give him a little bit of time because he was looking to use photos for certain things. He got up super early. I think it was like 5.30 in the morning, 6. And we met in a lounge there and he just wanted to do a simple shoot like this. So I decided not to use my off camera flash because it was so strong in relation to the room that I was in. I would have created quite a dark atmosphere, even darker than what you see here would have had harder sort of edges to the shadows I decided to move the couch close to the window and just use a big window light turn him side on so he has a narrow lighting effect where the, the lighting is on the short side of his face and the shadow is on the broad side of his face and because he's wearing a white shirt it's a gray couch it's a gray wall this is not a color contrast image so really straight away when I'm shooting I know this is all about tonal contrast which is what I created in the highlights and the Thing. but as you can see all the highlights in this image are controlled you know they're just at the point of about to be lost but I've managed to control it and not getting too extreme because if you go too extreme with the shadows you obviously can lose the left eye and things like that so it's all about positioning the face get the, get your subject to turn to the light to, to obviously till you can actually visually see where it looks good sort of like a Rembrandt effect or whatever you, you want to look for in the, in the, in the photograph but yeah, this image is all about tonal contrast Back to Cuba quickly, just to maybe the last one. Okay, again, color contrast and tonal contrast. You know, this is Cuba. This is about the colors. This is about the pink Cadillac. This is about everything. So there's a lot of context here, which is why you'd make it a color photograph. But let's just say, for example, this is not in Cuba. Let's just say this is another city. And the buildings aren't colorful, and that's not a pink Cadillac. There's enough in this photograph to have strong tonal contrast. Each road that's running parallel to the main road, uh, not parallel, uh, sort of crossing the main road, has light coming down it so there's already pockets of highlights down the road there's one in front the, the left hand building next to the cars has got beautiful tonal contrast so this this image has, has a strong element of both so if you were to excuse the fact that it's in cuba and has other colorful elements to it if i was to convert it it would work very well um, because there's enough in there the highlights in the cars there's just enough tonal contrast in the image yeah, so I hope that helps you when it comes to deciding what's a black and white image, you know, the different elements and, and being able to create it yourself. So we're so fortunate in today's day, day and age. You know, in the past, when I was shooting film, I had to look for these elements because I never did any post work. You know, you know in some degree in the darkroom, you can do post work to your black and white images and things like that. But it's not as simple as today. So a lot of, the, a lot of your production work at shoot time counted. Where now literally you can just shoot control your highlights and your shadows and then create an image which has both a high level of color contrast and tonal contrast or one of one of one or the other depending on what you like but certainly understanding both gives you a better shot of making a great image i really encourage you all to look into color contrast tonal contrast see how you can bring it into your editing uh, understand it in your software firstly uh, but beyond that i mean some of you may be doing this 
subconsciously. Some of you have learned the patterns, you understand what makes a good photograph and doesn't, and you're running through the motions, you're not even realizing that you're paying attention to these things. I understand that. But just being aware of it opens up new possibilities. You may look at a scene differently, you may look at color in a different way. You, you know, to understand the difference between that saturation, that bright color, and luminance of the color is totally different things, because uh, we see the world in color. So yeah, I really encourage you to look into this, mess around with it, um, even if you focus on, like, take a whole week out and just photograph in a certain way to focus on color contrast or focus on tonal contrast, uh, train your eye. All these things make you a better photographer. Uh, I thanks for your, thank you for your time. I thank you for uh, viewing my channel. Uh, please subscribe. Um, if you, if you want to get updates on my new videos coming through, just uh, hit that bell icon as well. And yeah, I just really appreciate you guys. And um, hopefully more photography tips will be coming through as I go. Thanks so much. God bless.